Hello everyone, welcome back friends. So, uh, in this class we take up the discussion of the UPSC mains 2021 public administration paper. Okay. So, the one problem I had when I was studying was like we did not have a model answer. So, what is the best answer for public administration? What is the worst answer? So, these things were not knowing what to write to gain maximum marks, what not to write. So, all those things there was no one to guide. Okay. So, all those questions which our teacher set. So, for those we used to get, but for what UPSC sets, there was no, but it is all about UPSC and if you do not know how to write for a UPSC answer, uh, no matter immaterial of how many test series we take and how many marks you get in those test series, so they all go in vain. So, here uh, it is an attempt from my side that let students understand what is a formidable answer, if not best. So, I am not going to claim these are the best ones, but these are the formidable ones one can write for for bad answers. So, the question paper was uh, somewhere around moderate. So, every time the mains question papers will be moderate. So, one or two papers will be in the difficult side. So, but that will be difficult for everyone. Okay. So, we will begin how the questions were there and what were the uh, range of the questions and how the answer would be. Okay. So, we will uh, move with the first one. Okay. So, before that, uh, as far as the strategy is concerned, see uh, for paper one, 80 percent of your answer should be from the thinkers part, the theoretical part and 20 percent should be from the paper 2 and the best way to bring the paper 2 into paper 1 is examples. Okay. Whenever you speak of leadership theories, so bring great leaders as examples. Whenever you speak about bureaucracy, so bring current IAS, IPS officers. So, this is how the maximum value addition you can do from the paper 2 and for paper 1, the value addition is your keywords and quotes. So, bring as many quotes as possible, have a vocabulary of quotes of various thinkers. Okay. So, we I have added some of the quotes of relevant thinkers. So, we will see how the questions go. First one, governance is about managing self organizing networks, elaborate. So, here the question itself, it takes time to decipher. So, it is like the government's governance is how to manage a self organizing network. So, governance has a self organizing network and how to manage them. So, that is the question. So, government is having governance is having networks like the civil societies, NGOs, okay. we have the private corporates, we have public private partnerships, we have joint ventures, we have the public for the owners. So, how to manage all these self organizing networks. Okay. So, we begin with Rhodes quote. So, governance refers to self organizing inter organizational networks characterized by interdependence, resource exchange and significant autonomy from the state. Okay. So, the quote itself provides a brief answer. So, like how the uh, self organizing happens like the intergovernmental networks okay, that is the interdependence. So, how one is dependent on the other and then the resource exchange, the financial exchange, the material exchange and then significant autonomy. So, autonomy resource exchange. So, in all these areas we are going to have a self organizing network and how we manage them. So, first one. So, it is a network of state, non state, public, private and charitable trust. Yes, but obvious in the very first paragraph we say that yes, it is having a very good network in a governance. Then it has to be a self organizing network. So, next stage we are going to answer how the governance is a self organizing network. That is every time state should not enforce this network. So, state should not interfere in every part and parcel of networks. So, once we are setting the structure, so the system should run on its own. So, like the program decision making what Herbert Simon said. So, that program decision making should go on every day. So, government should not interfere in programming every minute decisions that are taken in this self organized network. Okay. And then here we can bring in minimum government and maximum governance. So, which was the jargon of PM Modi in 2015 elections. Okay, then this happens in transparent auctioning of projects. Okay, so resource exchange. So how we are transferring the ownership from public to private by the transparent auctioning. Okay, and then the government and states they can have better coordination by the mutual consultation in policy formulation and policy implementation. Okay, and then delegation of some of the functions. So as far as the NGOs and civil society organizations are concerned. So, we have to delegate some of the powers 
okay and then the autonomy of parastatals so wherever we have the parastatals that is the semi government networks so what autonomy we are going to give so in all these we are going to set up a self organizing network so in smooth transition of resources in consultative decision making and then delegation of powers and then autonomy for this so in all these processes we are setting up a self organized network so that without government's interference from the next day the system goes on its own okay so in brief we are going to give the meaning for this as well as for the meaning of the first quote we have given in the introduction okay so here overall understanding is that yes government governance is a self organizing network so how to manage that by exchange of resources devolution of power and mutual consultation and autonomy given to them okay four points four keywords more than sufficient and then let public managers manage so here we are bringing christopher hoods okay so they are just coordinators the public managers are just managers so let them manage as much as possible so they should not do too much of work other than this management so just coordination and communication that's it okay we are not going to interfere in many others okay so such short questions will be difficult to decipher but if you decipher then it would be the easiest ones then come to next two dimensional taxonomy was used by herbert simon to describe the degree to which decisions are programmed and non programmed so here herbert simon we have to be thorough with herbert simon's theories so here it says that two dimensional taxonomy was used by herbert simon to decipher that is to describe the degree to which the decisions are either programmed or non programmed so but obvious the taxonomy itself the uh, value science dichotomy so value fact dichotomy value free science so all those the quote itself is speaking here so the taxonomy used by the herbert simon is so values and facts okay so we will see to what extent our decision should be programmed and to what extent it should be non programmed okay as per simon programmed decisions are routine work that are repetitive yes but obvious so programmed decisions are repetitive so here mostly the facts will prevail okay so we need not induce value systems every time okay so for a, a day to day business so it is like it goes as per the planned and predictions okay and then the non programmed decisions are novel unstructured and has to be dealt independently so these are the ones wherein value sets in so for example if you are starting a new company or you are starting a new business so here society emotions family so all those values they coming to picture so indirectly herbert simon's taxonomy says for the program decision making it is fact it is factual and almost all program decision making is factual in nature and non program decision is non program because it involves values okay and then techniques to deal with program decision making includes so it includes clerical expertise and then training the executive so the training the executive in terms of in terms of movement of file movement of circulars okay so simple communications coordinations okay so transfer of messages and all those things and then non programmed decisions can be taken by so rule of thumb again value and then judgmental skills and then innovative abilities so here everywhere a person's subjectivity a person's talent a person's social contacts so all these they are involved and then simon also stated that with the use of computers computational models etc can result in converting non programmed decisions into programmed decisions so if you make use of decision support system information system technology etc so 80% of programmed decisions can be converted into non programmed decisions so 80% of the decisions which involve values can be converted into those which can involve purely facts okay so that is the importance of management information system given by herbert simon okay then however definition of situation then analysis of the means and ends then decision of problems into independent parts choosing satisfying and optimizing alternatives can be solution that are common to the both 
okay so this is however a jargon we can give in a conclusion so that uh, we will give like uh, herbert simon concluded like we have to make sure that most of the non program decisions should be converted into program decisions okay so in brief we are going to explain herbert simon so the two dimensional taxonomy was value and fact and how they are linked to the programmed and non programmed decisions okay so to the extent of how the facts are involved they become programmed decision to the extent of which values are involved they become non programmed decision and conclusion simon said use all these techniques and make sure that non programmed decisions become programmed decisions okay so that is more than sufficient for this answer overall gist then come to next examine the approach of public service motivation as an inducement to bring the desired level of efficiency in public service delivery so one mistake students they always do is that whenever public service and others come you straight away move on to indian civil services which is mostly from paper 2 so give enough theoretical base give enough theoretical explanation with the help of keywords quotes and then move on to the examples okay so here w scott motivation is stimulating people into action to accomplish desirable goals okay so but obvious we have introduced with the definition of motivation and then as per chester bernard nature of work is one of the generic inducements okay so in public service people have the crucial life saving jobs okay so here the approach of public service motivation as an inducement to bring desired level of efficiency in the public service delivery so here when we motivate the people when we motivate the bureaucrats by saying that this is your life saving work so you are saving millions and millions of life and by that these bureaucrats they start loving their job and when they start loving their job they do the work with utmost motivation and when they do that then but obvious we are going to have an induced motivation for public service and that itself enhances public service delivery then satisfied individuals has per hertzberg so here i am bringing frederick hertzberg after a uh, chester bernard so here public servants should be satisf satisfied individuals that is even if there are small small problems so even if there are proper housing facilities in remote areas if there are no proper dc bungalows but even then civil service civil servants should go and work there okay so that is the satisfied individuals immaterial of minor glitches your motivation will not be put down so there are a number of ias ips officers who have resigned for not giving proper facilities in remote areas or might be posting to remote areas so that is not a motivated civil service so motivated civil servants are those which uh, who work despite these minor problems because for them their job is the most liking one not the facilities and peripherals given by the job like your lal batis and others and then approach so ethical training to work selflessly so that selfless service we have to motivate people for the selfless service okay so do it for the sake of nation for the people and others then to work behind the screen without expectation of awards or accolades so the very motto of civil service is working behind the screens and we should not expect publicity and all those things so here we can give example of the youtuber bureaucrats the famous youtuber bureaucrats so whenever they go there will be camera and that will be uploaded to youtube so to avoid all those then they should be trained to be abrahams who crave for higher order needs so they should not crave for lower or lower order needs so once you get into is your vision should be how i will develop my state my cadre or how i will develop my district which is given not that i have cleared is let me find some good girl and marry her or i uh, marry him and have a peaceful life so that is those are the silly ones so th those are not abrahams might be by matter of luck adams might have cleared civil service okay then like public welfare social change and adams who are craving for money luxury and bribe so they should not be encouraged then lastly public service motivation should make an individual passionate in the same and attain self actualization in public service so your self actualization so your ultimate gift given by god should be realized in this very civil service okay so this is how the motivation so 
if you motivate on these lines, but obvious we can expect desired level of efficiency from bureaucrats. So, despite minor glitches, despite workload, despite political pressure, so they will deliver if they are motivated individuals. Okay. So, like this we can uh, provide the answer, give the best. Then D, in theory the civil society organizations promote cooperation between people and public service organizations, but in practice their activities restrict the promotion of government programs. Analyze. So, here this was a current affairs question, it was in news some uh, one or two years back when FCRA bill and others have come. Okay. So, how to write a formidable answer? So, civil society organizations can only be supplement to the government, so, but they cannot supplant the government. Okay. So, here the whenever it comes to the theoretical part, so you will explain a bit saying that the uh, why civil society organizations they have to be only think tanks. So, they do not have the public mandate and they do not have the enforcement of a force of law, but the government has a public mandate, it has a force of law and it is the very duty of the government and government has a massive ownership of resources which can be mobilized, but civil society organizations they have none of these except some good ideas. Okay. So, that is why those are better given as advice rather than they were pushed down the throat or they were given as uh, a matter of uh, right for them. So, that whatever they are being saying, so they have to be implemented at any cost. So, there has to be nothing of such sort. Okay. So, there were NGOs which forced and government has tried to curb them and we will see. Okay. So, Greenpeace India was alleged of stopping Jaitapur power plant. So, uh, Greenpeace India thought that uh, whatever it is doing it was right and it is an obligation on the government to stop Jaitapur, but government has other arguments. So, it is Jaitapur is going to give electricity to several unelectrified regions okay, and then Amnesty International was stalling the removal of article 370 and other bills okay, and government has other arguments. So, I want to remove article 370 to give education and employment for the people and that sounds to be valid and then good governance is whether public get or not, but who gives or not is not the question. Okay. So, governance is whether the public are getting or not that is the matter of concern who is giving whether public, private, corporate, civil society immaterial of all those things. So, that is why whenever governance comes it is like the cooperation okay, what matters. So, nothing like competition matters there okay, and then however, some of them are working to enhance the cooperation. So, we also give some positive and examples because question also speaks about cooperation that is Red Cross Society in US, then Rotary Club in Europe, then Mazdur Kishan Sakti San Sangatan in India, so etcetera are easing the government's work. So, that easing is nothing but the cooperation okay, between people and the pu public service organizations okay. and then there should be cooperation, coordination and collaboration and not collision, collusion and confusion. Okay. So, this is a jargon we can use okay, in the conclusion and give the best, but obvious this is easy question compared to others wherein you have to study the thinkers in depth to answer them. Then come to next. So, Payal and Taylor had different management perspectives while having similar goal of organizational efficiency. So, this resembles to somewhat the question we gave in our test series. So, Fayol's view were broader than Taylor's view comment. So, Fayol's view on organizational structure and behavioralism was broader was broader than Taylor's view comment. This was the question given and very similar to that Fayol and Taylor had different management perspectives while having similar goal of organizational efficiency. So, efficiency was the same goal, but how they visualized were different. So, we will explain how. So, first we begin Fayol's perspectives applied for higher level of organization. Okay. So, Fayol he spoke about POCCC planning, organizing, controlling, commanding, etcetera, coordinating okay. and Taylor's ideas were restricted to the shop floor. So, both of them claimed for efficiency, but his efficiency was in the higher order management, but Taylor's efficiency was in the lower order management. So, he is focused only on functional foremanship, gang boss, 
instruction card clerk, route clerk and others. And then tailor centered to work study, soldiering etc. However, payol centered on planning, organization, coordinating, controlling. Okay. So, work study. So, this is basically the mechanical work and planning is a intellectual work. Okay. So, there are two different works, mechanical and the intellectuals and Fayol concentrated on intellectual and Taylor on the mechanical. Then Taylor's view was very idealistic that is science at any cost and never the rule of thumb. Okay. And it was so naive, he did not take into consideration several practical ground realities, but Fayol was unlike of that. So, Fayol gave the gang plank wherein during practical times you can overcross the hierarchy and you can go for shortcuts. Okay, and then Fayol also gave that centralization should be there, but centralization and responsibility should be balanced. Okay, he did not go for absolute centralization and he neither went for absolute decentralization. Okay, and then however, both postulate universal set of principles. Okay, so now we can counter this. So, comment means any way you want you can argue and here you are countering saying that. So, both of them said that uh, all of my principles are going for efficiency and these are inclusive of universal principles. Okay. So, Taylor said my principles were applicable equally to mines, church and factories and they bring efficiency everywhere. So, at this I, they bring efficiency everywhere okay. and then Fayol said let us find general set of principles which are equally applicable for better functioning of all organizations okay. and both postulated for planning organization, coordinating and controlling. Okay. So, here uh, when Taylor said, so he spoke about the coordination, harmony not discord etcetera, he did not speak specifically on this POCC. Okay. On those lines you can say, so although you have countered this in the first para, you will say that uh, Taylor also spoke about higher order management when he said that harmony not discord okay, and then uh, hands on boss. So, how a boss should be, how a leader should be all those things implicitly said. So, although sometimes the perspectives were different, but however, there were some convergences. So, anyway, so how your brain runs inside the exam hall, so you will move on. Okay. So, it is not about a, a perfect answer which is uh, sit, sit and thought out inside the uh, staff room, but it is how inside the exam hall how your thought flow process runs. Okay. So, go as per, but make sure that the perspectives and efficiency, so those are the main which are being spoke out. Okay. And then coming to next, behavioral approach has been questioned on the basis of its utility in the analysis of administrative problems. Okay. Discuss the weakness of the approach and the shifts made therein. So, this is a 20 mark question, we have to note it here. Okay. So, behavioral approach has been questioned on the basis of its utility in the analysis of administrative problems. Okay. So, are they applicable for analysis of the problems? Okay. So, dis discuss the weakness of the approach and the shifts made therein. So, how the weaknesses were there and how the shift was there. Okay. So, at the very first instance you will not be knowing what to write and how to write and we will see further how the answer can be written. Okay. So, from the beginning you start from behavioralism, Elton Mayo. Behavioralism was in the misconception that organization can work in structural vacuum. So, Elton Mayo said, so it is enough that you give snacks it is enough that if you give rest, etc., in his hotworm experiment, and he said that all those Taylor fuel, all those things are not at all necessary because man is not at all a rational economic man, but he is a social emotional being. Okay, and then Mayo's relay assembly test room experiment proved that just snacks and relaxations can enhance productivity. Okay, so this was questioned by many. Okay, so behavioral approach has been questioned for its utility. So, can this be applicable? So, can any organization run without a structure or without any rules, without any signs, okay, without any hierarchy? So, never. Okay. So, this was the weakness. Then later came Chester Bernard. So, 
although he was not as hypocritic as Mayo, but he gave too much importance to informal organizations. Okay, so the shift has started coming down, but thing is that the hangover remains. And here Mayo says that yes, both formal and informal organizations should be there. So when you have the informal organizations, grape wines, informal communications, etc., at the same time formal communications, hierarchy, all these things should be there. Okay, but the thing is that due to hangover, he gave too much importance to informal organization. He said informal organizations are the natural ones, but formal organizations were the artificial ones. Okay, so that was again questioned by various uh, structuralists, and then Simon was equally unaware of importance of principles ad administration. So then came Simon. Simon said, "No, we have to have facts as well, not only value system." We should have facts also. We should have program decision making. We should have proper information. So all these are signs of administration. So he gave equal importance to science, but he said the principles were myths, proverbs, inanities, and profanities. Okay. So again, he committed a mishap by condemning others. Okay. So he had an advantage, like he came after Taylor and Fiol had. Teller and Fayol came after him. Even they were criticized. They would have criticized Simon. Okay. So here also some hangover was there. But the shift is seen. Okay. So here no classical was recognized. Here the formalism was recognized at least. And here the classicalism was recognized. But the principles were condemned. So that universalism was condemned. Okay. And then behavioralism failed to analyze. Structure is essential for. The allocation of business, okay, and fixing the pay, giving responsibilities. So it was wrong when they said that the organization runs base, uh, purely by behavioralism. So they have to have said like both of them should go hand in hand. Then they failed to analyze the man not only needs snacks and entertainment but also inspection and foremanship, okay. So that deterrence should also be there. And then formal communication is safer, and gray points mostly give rise to. Rumors which harm the organization. Okay, so these were the questions and these were the criticisms, and these said that behavioralism. So they were not so uh, applicable and they were not so uh, utility based when compared to the others. Okay, and then the shifts. So Simon shifted to the fact-based decision making. Okay, so now we can see the shift. So Simon said about. Fact based, then Bernard recognized a character of communication that is legitimate, impartial, and clear. So, when he speaks of communication, he is speaking of formal communication. So, formalism needed. Then, lastly, Simon also advised for program decision making. So, this was the last nail in the coffin. So, he said that when program decision making came, so everywhere that science, hierarchy, all those things have to come. Okay. So, here we are proceeding likewise. So at the very first instance, so that utility was not so good, and then when they learned that it is impossible for the behavioralism to survive, so the utility of behavioralism without structuralism was not at all present. So then they started realizing that no structure and behavioralism should go hand in hand. Okay. So first we are uh, saying how the utility was questioned. Okay. And then we are saying how the shift happened. Okay, so we have given the best to this. Okay, now coming to next one, two B, public administration has been viewed as a socially embedded process of collective relationship, dialogue, and action. Examine the statement in the light of consensus achieved in the third Minobru conference. Okay, so in the third Minobru conference, what a common student knows, it is like it was too interdisciplinary. And uh, many uh, comparative public administrationists joined, and then uh, technology was induced. So e-governance was thought to be brought in. Okay, and however, that value uh, system. Okay, so those were carried from the Minobrook one and from the Minobrook two. Uh, the enterprise government was carried. So by using all these gist, so just try to add. Answer this question. Okay, so you need not think extraordinary over there. And 
public administration has been viewed as a socially embedded process of collective relationship dialogue and action. Okay. So, it is not unilaterally from the government, it is a collective one. So, by then the governance was uh, arising, the term governance. So, how we collectively evolve? Okay. So, we will begin. Rosemary O'Leary, so she was the one who added Minobrook 3 and in her book Future of Administration, Public Management and Public Service Around the World shows that third Minobrook conference treated administration with broadest perspective. So, here she says that the future of public administration should be there. Yes, so relevance values, equities, change should be there, public management should be there. So, enterprise government, so timely service delivery, quality service delivery, competition, all those things should be there and then NPS should also be there. So, government should row, not only should steer. So, steering, rowing and problem solving ability of government, all the three are included. So, for embedding all the three, so we should have a collective relationship between the government and the public, between the government and the corporates and the corporates and the public. Okay. And then dialogue and action should be there. Okay. So, now it included the resolution of young Turks like Waldo who said administration should solve the social turbulence and critical problems of the day. In this light, ethics in administration, leadership quality among bureaucrats etc. were discussed. Okay. So, in the Minobrook 3, we carried forward Dwight Waldo, okay. So, Dwight Waldo by that time he was old, he was not a young Tusker when he was in a Minobrook 1, it was almost past 60 years and then his leadership qualities and others, so they were carried forward, okay. So, here we say that bureaucrats, so bureaucrats should be the leaders and bureaucrats should have uh, ethics, they should not be self-aggrandizing, they should mingle with the public, they should interact with the public, okay. And then the, however, the current societal trends like public management, enterprise government, reinventing, reengineering the right sizing was planned. And then later the role of public was re-emphasized okay. and now it was the public's turn to interact. So, here administration that does not solve the problems of minorities will surely used to suppress them was inculcated. So, in the Minobrook 3 again overall it is like if the government is going only for the enterprise or if it is going only for the corporatism, it does not succeed. So, it has to cater to the weaker sections, it has to cater to the minorities also and then even compared to public administration was accepted that is res resolutions were made to recognize best administrative practices in the west and not to live in west is the best mindset. So, it is not the west, it is east. Okay. So, efforts were made okay, to make sure that we identify the best management practices in the east and not to live in west is the best mindset. And then Guthrie's bottom up approach and then Werner Jan's activating state and then Robert Clary's uh, slowed down bureaucracy. So, all these were included in Minobrook 3. So, when all these come, so there has to be a, a proper debate discussion and there have to be a collective relationship. Okay. So, whenever we are speaking of activating state, so here government should be the catalyst, government should be the leader and then slow down bureaucracy. Now, government should leave space to NGOs, civil society organizations okay. and then uh, we have good bottom up approach. So, the gram panchayats and the local self governments should be given the chance and then totally administration was made less prescriptive more descriptive, less positive more normative and less institutional and more client oriented, but no less scientific. So, I am using Fredrickson's quote, uh, although he quoted during the Minobrook 1, but here you are speaking about how the collective relationship, the dialogue and action. So, all these have to be taken. So, we have to have a collective relationship between NPI, NPM and NPS and then the dialogue should happen between the public, corporate, public, uh, government and corporate public in all those and then uh, action. So, action should be on the basis of the uh, rules framed after the dialogue. So, we are going up with one uh, particular rules and plan of action. So, uh, on those basis, we have to go with the action. So, while implementing those actions, we should not look into the west is the best syndrome. 
we have to make sure that whatever that is present in the indigenous administration. So, those are utilized for the implementation of whatever dialogue that is being formed. Okay. So, overall you give a gist on these lines. Okay. So, that would be uh, more than sufficient for this and then public private partnership phenomenon has been transformed into a type of governance scheme or mechanism. So, discuss its capacity to overcome future challenges. Okay. So, the PPP has been transformed into a type of governance. Okay. So, but obvious it is a part and parcel of governance and how it has to overcome future challenges. Now, PPP emerged with philosophy of shared partnership with public and private. Yes, but obvious and then BOT the first PPP model gave ownership of certain assets to the private. Okay. So, the ownership itself it gave and then Swiss challenge model gave the highest bidder a, uh, a close confident of government in all future projects. So, in the Swiss challenge model how it works like if a person is owning the contract. So, when the next contract comes, so first we will have a word with him. If he agrees, he will take up else it will be given to others. So, now he is a close confident of the government. So, here the PPP was giving ownership to the corporate here it made him a close confident and then the government has taken major responsibilities to ensure the people the quality of service delivered. Yes. So, for example, in limited liability partnership most of the responsibility is taken by the government. So, in all these whenever we are giving someone the ownership, whenever we are taking excess responsibility, whenever we are making a entity a close confident, but obvious we have become a type of governance and it is become a government scheme in all. So, PPP is nothing but a government's initiative or it is a part and parcel of government and then in hybrid annuity model. So, here a strict performance based allocation is ensured so that even transparency and accountability is also installed under PPP. So, all these they show that you have to underline these okay, whenever you speak of ownership close confident. Okay, transparency and accountability and responsibilities. So, when you underline all these keywords show that you are expressing that it has become a part of governance scheme and then the future challenges and its capacity. So, increased demand for land. So, so increased demand for land makes it risky for both government and the private to acquire land. So, land acquisition was a problem. So, that is going to accentuate in the near future. Okay. Hence, even local people should be brought into partnership. So, how to uh, uh, how to accept this challenge, how to overcome this? So, by involving PPPP, okay. so public private uh, people partnership, okay. by this we can have a smooth exchange of land. Then environmental activists and their concerns should be made a party to the concessionaire agreement. So, the environmental activists should also be involved in this. So, we can PPPE, so public private people partnership with environmental accountability. Okay. And then improved technology is one strong area where private can capitalize on and this can resolve several challenges. Okay. So, technology can solve several challenges. For example, recently several states they have been inviting Elon Musk. Okay. So, why they are inviting Elon Musk? So, that he will bring one or the other technology okay, to solve the problems and even the PPP comes up with the technology. So, such technology should be made utilized for solving the problems. Okay. For example, if there is a problem in revenue sharing or profit sharing, so we can design a software for them. Okay. So, we if we have a problem in transparency and accountability, so we can have a surveillance CCTV cameras. So, that will enhance transparency. So, such technologies can be used. So, how you tackle? So, this is how you tackle. So, public involving the people and then involving technology and then involving environmental activists and their con concerns. So, you have given uh, answers for both the demands of the question. So, give the best. Then, come to next integration of different streams of administrative thought to propound a universal administrative theory is hindered by impact of culture critically examine. 
So, here the statement itself uh, defines that the grand theory building. So, in the grand theory building, how we will neglect the culture. So, this is how we will argue. So, theory of grand, the strategy of the grand theory building of comparative administrative group has brought CPA towards utopianism. So, it has made it utopian. So, something imaginative. So, what CPA did not want that universal for the same it was striving for that is one single structure for all okay, grand theory and then Robert Golombowski's quote. So, CAG set unattainable goals and suffered from self inflicted failures. Okay. So, here we are saying like how universal theory is hindered by culture. So, how they are? So, this quote you explain this quote saying that. So, this was not required by CPA because they neglected the local culture and how it is hindered community management of assets can work in India, but not in West where community life is not a culture. So, here in India we have Akutus, Devarakadus, sacred groups, etcetera. So, these assets are managed by the community itself. So, in India it is possible, but in US the very culture of US does not provide for single community. So, it provides for nuclear family. So, no one knows who lives in the nearby neighborhood. So, for such a community the community management of assets cannot embed within their culture and then behavioral implementation of laws in Japan is possible only in Japan not in India. So, in Japan whenever people cross 60 years they surrender the driving license saying that they cannot control emergency times and they will commit accidents. Okay. So, when that is the case, so that is behavioral management, but in India even without driving license people with 70, 75 years, so they will drive vehicles and they do not drive by seeing the roads, they drive by seeing the police, whether police is there, whether he will catch, if he catches we will take a U turn here itself. So, behavioral management or voluntary complaints of policy is a myth in India, but it is a, it is a reality in Japan. Okay. So, again the culture. So, impact of culture is hindering that universalism. Then, citizens charter is efficient only in John Majors UK, where all people are illiterates, but not in any other nations. Okay. So, not in India, not in South Africa, not in Zimbabwe, others. Okay. So, this is how. Then, countering, however, some international best practices have been accepted cutting across cultures. So, some international best practices have been accepted. What are they? Bureaucracy of Weber is present equally in capitalist Europe as in communist China or anarchic North Korea. So, bureaucracy was the bare minimum which Weber gave and that is present in a socialist nation, communist nation, capitalist nation and anarchic nation also. And then as said by Taylor and Fayol, structured principles are not only generalist, but they are also universalistic. So, some principles like discipline organization, coordination, harmony. So, they are inherently present universally. So, without they being said by these people, they are already present. Okay. So, this is how by sometimes they are hindered, but there are some which are universally applicable. So, our duty is whichever fit universally let them fit. So, we will not try to fit additional ones. We will not try to forcefully fit. If they are already fitting, we will encourage them. If something is not fitting, we will recognize the uniqueness and we will customize our administration. Okay. Then, however, as per the words of Woodrow Wilson, it is better to see different streams of administration via cultural lens. Okay. So, we are not modifying, just seeing via cultural lens. So, but the lens is different and within the lens, if something are same, so let them be same and if some things are different let them be different as well. We are not trying to equalize even the different ones. Okay. So, like this you can argue. So, as the question asks to critically examine. So, you have to provide both the sides of argument. So, and make sure that this part the critical part sounds to be more in content. Okay. So, because critical means it is uh, towards something the criticisms. Okay. So, not a uh, do not write all criticisms only. So, that is not critically examining. So, what is the word of meaning examine? So, you have to examine both positives and negatives. Critically examine means point out more negatives, not that point only the negatives. Okay. So, give likewise, give the best. Then, coming to next. 
थ्री बी जुडिशियल रिव्यू प्रिवेंशन ऑफ मिस यूज और अब्यूज ऑफ एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव पावर एंड प्रोविजन ऑफ सुटेबल रेमिडीज आर द बेसिक प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव लॉ जेटिफाई हैज हाउ वेरियस ऑर्गन्स ऑफ स्टेट आर एबल टू अपहोल्ड दीज प्रिंसिपल्स के सो हियर सो ऑल दीज आर बेसिक प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव लॉ हाउ दे आर बेसिक प्रिंसिपल्स यू विल एक्सप्लेन एंड देन जस्टिफाई हाउ वेरियस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ द स्टेट आर एबल टू अपहोल्ड दीज सो वट ऑबियस इफ यू स्पीक ऑन दीज लाइन्स के एंड गिव सम एग्जाम्पल्स सो दैट इट्स एल्फ इज सफिशियंट विल सी जेम्स हार्ट एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव लॉ इंक्लूड्स लॉ मेड बाई एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन एंड ऑल दोज लॉ दैट गॉन्ट टू कंट्रोल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन सो वट ऑबियस ए सिंपल डेफिनेशन एंड देन जुडिशियल रिव्यू सो जस्ट लाइक लॉस ऑल एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव लॉस आर ऑल्सो सब्जेक्टिव टू जुडिशियल रिव्यू बट ऑबियस सो जुडिशियरी हैज द राइट टू स्ट्राइक डाउन आर अमेंड आर आल्टर ऑल एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव लॉस एज वेल सो जस्ट बिकॉज दे आर एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव लॉस दे कैनॉट गो आउट ऑफ द एम्बिट ऑफ जुडिशियल रिव्यू के एंड देन इफ द एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव लॉस आर अगेंस्ट द पेरेंट लॉ एंड इफ दे आर अगेंस्ट द लॉ ऑफ द लैंड देन दे आर स्ट्रक डाउन बाई जुडिशियरी not by parliament so they are struck down by judiciary okay so here if they are against the parent law okay so they are amenable to judicial review and if they are against the constitution that is the law of the land even then they are subject to judicial review okay and then the new it rules provided to block the social media accounts of activists which was not supported by it act so it act was removed with the 66a section but when it rules came up with the same so it said that so 66a is not there so this it rules is against the it act okay so several claims were coming and several oppositions came for the same reason okay so if you had read this so you will be giving such examples easily else you cannot give such examples that is why update your current affairs so that your answers they become value added okay so here we are saying like yes the the very principle of administrative law is the amenability to judicial review and then prevention of misuse of administrative power so here the administrative control conduct rules provide for frequent disclosure of annual assets and then code of conduct insists administration to maintain impartiality and probity so here you should not wear uh, informal dresses you should not accept gifts okay and you should not take part in government auctions and if there are any relatives of yours taking part you have to inform okay so such things and you should not communicate something which government has not communicated with you or which the government has said not to communicate with you so all those will make sure that the misuse of power is curbed so when you have a rule and when you are violating your rule because of your instinct to misuse the power you will be caught okay so this is curbing your misuse of power and then provision of suitable remedies so here administrative law provides some necessary power for the administration to find out re remedies for implementation of problems in the grassroots level so whenever the practical problems arise so in all those problems so we are making sure that we are having some minimum power for administration to resolve such problems so remedies for example a dc can issue emergency ration cards to needy people if they don't have the necessary documents so if they don't have necessary documents so on emergency purpose say temporarily for one month or two month a temporary ration card can be provided so it is not like if they don't have necessary documents they will be sent back without food okay so such powers so they are required so here we have explained how they are and how various organizations so here how a dc so how a dc he comes up with or how the higher order so they state the code of conduct okay and then here the role of judiciary so we have brought in so most of the things in administrative law then lastly code of ethics is also an administrative law but it caters to introspection self review and self control okay so code of ethics is an inner administrative law we can say okay so by this we can conclude okay and give the best okay now 
regulation is an old but increasingly necessary mode of social coordination and political intervention into societal processes examine in it in the context of globalization so the regulation sir sorry regulation is old but increasingly necessary so regulation regulation is old but it is necessary mode of social coordination and political intervention so friends just when you read once you will not understand so just break the sentences and then read okay so regulation is old but necessary so that is what the gist and examining in the context of globalization okay now the legislation of marijuana is not a dangerous experiment the prohibition is the experiment and it has failed dramatically okay so the legalization of marijuana is not dramatic but banning is dramatic so regulation has to be there but a complete strict regulation doesn't agar well okay so here sebastian marincolo he has given this so even if you legalize it would not be dangerous but banning is dangerous so too much of regulation too much of interference is bad okay so it is necessary but it is old so it is time to adopt for the new kinds of friendly regulations or say self regulations okay so like this so regulation is old so with the onset of npm we have moved away towards enterprise government and now state is no more a regulator but it is a facilitator so how we are moving from old to new kind of regulation from regulation to being a facilitator then robert clary also stated that government should slow down from being a maibap so maibap means absolute regulation okay we should slow down we should not go for a complete political intervention in everywhere and we should not uh, communicate with the people every time okay to see whether the organs are performing well or not so we have to empower the people themselves to communicate with such organizations so home ministry need not come to people every time to ask whether the dgp is working well or not or whether uh, sp is working well or not okay so let even public take care of them okay so that social coordination and political intervention should be as minimum as possible and then christopher hoods public servants are mere managers okay so they have to just manage okay they should not over regulate the things then however it is needed because okay so however it is necessary because society has inherent tendency of entropy okay so we have to intervene politically sometimes okay and it moves readily from industry to agraria if not monitored okay so to stop a society from moving from industry to agraria we have to make sure that the regulation as a mode of social coordination that is motivating the public motivating the subordinates are required then market has inherent tendency to monopolize okay so hence it is essential to maintain a healthy competition so here the political intervention is required then political intervention is essential as market do not care to unpaid citizenry yes and also political intervention is essential in case of market failures so when in 2008 when market failed so government came up with fiscal stimulus so at times intervention is necessary then uniform policies throughout the world also necessitates the same so now we are coming towards globalization so we have uniform policies okay so world bank imf wto are essential to curb the greece like crisis and then devolution of currency by china then beggar thy neighbor attitude of asian tigers so when globalization came so we have to make sure that uniform policies is applied for all the nations in the international market so for that one international regulator is required okay so in the era of globalization so we have many challenges but that doesn't mean that regulation should be sidelined so we have to have a regulator so globalization needs global regulators but they should not be the old regulators who intervene often so there should be new regulators who will facilitate first and then regulate next okay so on those lines we can uh, conclude this so here in the conclusion part hence regulation is necessary but it has to be impartial transparent rule based and democratic okay so these are the new form of regulation in the era of globalization that is required 
so it has to be transparent for all the nations it has to be impartial so we should not go for non proliferation treaty like things wherein we are giving excess of power for veto and no nuclearization for non veto powers so such partiality should not be there and then it has to be rule based and democratic okay so everywhere in imf world bank the electoral reforms have to be brought in okay so such ones such a kind of new regulation is what the globalization needs okay so even in the era of globalization regulation doesn't fade away it stands to say stay but its forms will change okay so it is going to become a facilitator so but obvious we are taking all our knowledge towards this meaning of this question and delivering so that is what we require in this analytical questions then for a the new public service model approaches governance on the premises of an active and involved citizenship wherein no role wherein the role of public officials is to facilitate opportunities for citizens engagement in governance again see there is a upsc tendency that it just gives lengthy statements so that you will not get the actual demand of that question so if you just mark the keywords but obvious we can decipher the demand of that question so the new public service model approach model approaches the governance on the premises of active and involved citizenship okay and wherein the role of public officials is to facilitate opportunities for citizens engagement so nps says that we have to facilitate opportunities for citizens engagement okay so this is the overall demand so we begin with denart and denhart so nps is more an npa so it is an activism okay it is more masses than classes so it not only helps in solving the problems of the people but also encourages the participation of the people in solving the problem so this is how we have to encourage so this is how we have to public uh, officials have to facilitate the citizens in problem solving so you can bring in anything like a citizens charter or an ombudsman lokpal wherein people themselves participated in problem solving so the nps is nothing but in uh, involving the people in problem solving then nicolas henry nps considers citizen with a broader context than mere passive beneficiaries like npa or paid clients like nps okay sorry like npm okay so here uh, nicolas henry says like uh, nps treats citizen as a broader concept so broader concept means so they can be involved in policy formulation implementation evaluation so more and more engagement with the government is what nps requires okay so people have to say what service they require and then government goes and serves so then government goes and rose okay so even if they are poor so they will come out and say this is why we are poor and government solves them so likewise then after nps came the citizens charter so the citizens charter was uh, we can say an offshoot of nps and that said people participate in making the charter then inspect the government and demand the action taken reports okay so this is how nps is enabling the officials to facilitate okay for active involvement so active involved citizens citizenry then came the right based approach so here the serving the people is not the choice but a duty and foremost obligation so whatever service we are doing we are doing by the obligation because people have demanded because it is their right to demand and then here involvement of people in formulation of lokpal bill you can give as example and then hence NPS start for rowing together than steering by any one entity. So rowing together we are rowing. We are not only the government is rowing. Okay, and here apart from Lokpal, try to give some three to four examples. Okay, so make sure that this is a twenty mark question. Okay, so explain the things beautifully. So whatever we have done in the explanation part, whatever we have spoke, so add all of them. How we have to engage that interaction and then. participation in policy formulation implementation and evaluation and bring in citizen centric governance of second year c and add all those things and make a beautiful answer here then come to next neo weberian state involves changing the model of cop operation of administrative structures 
into a model focused on the meeting citizens needs ok. So, bureaucracy neo bureaucracy it speaks about the citizen centric administration that is the meeting of citizens needs and we have to change from being rule worshippers from being the self aggrandizing bureaucrats to citizen centric bureaucrats ok. And here we see the neo barbarian state which is a concept that was first introduced by the Polit and Bokwart in their book on comparative public management reform ok. So, this you need not write in the test. So, I added to add a value so that to inform you so that if the same questions appear next time. So, we will give uh, without any glitch, but uh, this might not have been studied by most of the students and even if you just write a generalistic answer and if you uh, take some uh, 4.55 out of 15. So, that would be more than sufficient, but however, as a part of discussion we discuss what is post Weberian or neo Weberian bureaucracy. So, it was introduced by Polit and Bokyat ok and the neo Weberian state opens up for more responsibility of the state and highlights the role played by civil servants in making the reform work. So, that gives on the participative management or participative administration ok. So, but obvious when we participate that becomes citizen centric. Then it also emphasizes the need for efficient and timely service delivery to citizens and here the wishes of the citizens are taken into consideration. Then changes in administrative structure. So, how we should change? So, we should bring in professional bureaucracy. So, friends professional bureaucracy then Jagran Habermas, okay, Robert Smith and Thomas Lynch. So, all these they are explained in the post modern bureaucracy. So, if you go and read that post modern bureaucracy chapter then but obvious this paragraph will be easier for you. So, professional bureaucracy. So, that is a bureaucracy which is uh, dispassionate, but not disinterested. So, dispassionate means I am equally dispassionate of both the caste and both the religion both the creed, but I am not disinterested. So, I do not want like let her you let you fight and go to hell. So, I will never be bothered. So, that is not. So, whenever you both fight. So, I will be in the exact middle position to solve the problem. So, I am interested in you people, but I am not more interested to someone and less interested to other. So, I am dispassionate, but not disinterested ok. So, here professional bureaucracy is one which uh, shuns away the uh, self aggrandizing budget maximizing egotist bureaucracy and it tries to mingle with the people. So, here professional means not that negative meaning it was spoken in the positive meaning ok. So, this is how you change. So, bring the uh, bureaucracy towards being a change agents, being a social friendly one, being citizens friendly one motivate them ok. So, such explanations you can write in professional bureaucracy then development administration not dominant administration. So, whatever skills and capabilities they acquire. So, that skills and capabilities are not to shun the public, but to change the public not to keep distance from the public, but to make sure that they will interact with the public. So, whenever I build a office. So, my office chamber will not be very deep inside. So, that even if I am uh, relieving in my office. So, the office the peon says officer is busy. So, that should not be my structure. So, I should be the first hand. So, people should see me whenever they enter, they should see me whether I am busy or whether I am working ok or whether I am free ok. So, such such uh, changes in structures, structures in hierarchy. So, it is not like people will meet 9 officers and then meet D C at the very first instance also they can meet the D C and then boundaryless organization. So, abolishing the boundary between citizen and bureaucrats abolishing the boundary between one office to the other. So, if I want a education officer to solve one problem. So, cutting across boundaries I call directly to the education officer irrespective of protocols. Then no more rigid hierarchy, then no more specialization, then rules orientation etcetera. So, example lateral entry ok. So, anyone can enter into bureaucrats if they are willing to serve the people ok. So, these are the changes in the structure we are going to make it. So, that the bureaucrats meet the citizens interest ok. Then the neo Weberian state underlines that performance management should be carried out in a responsible manner 
okay so neo weber and bureaucracy also states that we should not only encourage bureaucracy to do all these things we should also have an element of deterrence that if they don't do all these we should oppress their performance and a bit of punishment also should be awarded if they are not going up with the citizen centric administration then neo weberian state draws on too many sources of inf inspiration to become a fully coherent public governance paradigm so too many inspirations ethics motivations and others okay and several scholars have added so that how bureaucracy should be made citizen friendly okay so do a brief study on the neo weberian bureaucracy of the polit bocquet but of your friends they have written books together so we have to bring down in one page okay so some might bring one perspective of him some might bring the other perspective of him so it is different but your duty is just to make some sense whenever you are writing and that should be in compliance with the answer so that is more than sufficient here then nothing in public administration is more important interesting or mysterious than leadership okay analyze the statement in the context of strategic leadership okay so here the question is all about leadership theory and we begin nathan rothschild noted that great fortunes are made when cannon balls fall in the harbor and not when violins play in the ballroom okay so the strategic decision means those serious decisions okay so you become a leader whenever you save a family from difficulty whenever you save an organization from difficulty and whenever you save a nation from difficulty yeah, you never become a leader just by arranging one party or just by arranging one trip all those things so that anyone can do okay so it is when the cannons are falling okay so when at that position if you take the leadership you become a true leader but when the violins are playing so it is not so leadership required there and then the more unpredictable the environment the greater the opportunity okay so for strategic decision okay so the strategic leadership comes only when there is some trouble there are some issues okay so if you have leadership skills to capitalize on it so unpredictable environment are the ones which give the maximum opportunity so hitler made the utilization of unpredictability that was present after the world war 1 and the germany situation okay now the thing in public administration is more important interesting or mysterious than leadership okay so it is important because leadership is the one which takes the strategic decisions which saves the organization which protects them from market volatility and then it is more interesting yes because they are the risk takers so those are the ones which motivate and those are the adventurers so that is why they are most interesting and mysterious no one understands what they do what they think okay so the strategic leaders character so first one they anticipate the future so how the mark zuckerberg's metaverse is coming so how they will anticipate metaverse is going to come and they capitalize on that okay and how a leader changes the status quo okay john major then rightly interpret the views of the followers okay so a leader is one who predicts the unpredictability the most unpredictability is what is going on in the minds of the followers and gandhi ji rightly read the opinion of masses and that's why he is the darling of masses then the right decision so winston churchill he went for the world war 2 and he took right decisions okay so by all this strategic leadership becomes very very important okay for saving an organization it is very very interesting because in all these reasons so that is a true adventurism which strikes the chord of masses and then it is very very mysterious not every person can predict a market not every person can read the minds of the followers not every person can go ahead and change the status quo okay so 90% of civil servants are stooges of this status quo so even the toppers and the great toppers okay who have hit continuously the top ranking in civil service so they have become the agents of status quo why because the lack of ability to change and then learn so they search for lessons in both successful and unsuccessful outcomes okay so again these are pe these people are mysterious because they take success and failures 
as the lessons they have learnt. And then in the conclusion, wherever you see a successful business, someone once made a courageous decision. So, this courageous decision is nothing but strategic leadership, Peter Drucker's quote. Okay. So, these characteristics are the strategic leaders characteristics I have discussed and how they, they are important interesting. So, you can explain on your own words. I do not think you require a specific answer for those. And then section B. Okay, so, now if we come to the section B. The approach to the study of administration in its environmental context is especially more useful for developing countries. Okay, so, comparative administration. So, ecological study of administration is more important for developing countries. Comment. So, here public administration is more egocentric and ethro ethnocentric. Adjani and Dubo. So, here make it comparative public administration. Okay, and then till the beginning of comparative administration, the administrative best practices of developing countries had never been unearthed. Okay, and then although developing countries are prismatic, so there have to be both bazaar and canteen, or there have to be a market rate, and there also should be the PDS rates. Okay, so the ecological study of administration, the comparative study of administration. So, they are useful for developing countries more because most of them are prismatic in nature. Okay. So, these developing nations, they have ascriptive characteristics, attained characteristics. So, they have merit students, they also have people who uh, depend on their caste lead religion, so that they can use their influence and they can get into. Okay. And there are some pressure groups who will lobby in the name of their caste creed religion and there are also people who struggle hard and fight the elections. Okay. So, when the prismatic societies are there, so then but obvious how to study the environment. Okay. So, how to make sure that we will get rid of all these, how to balance all these. So, that is why it is more useful for developing nations. Then developing countries should work under selectivism, not universalism. So, here to what extent we have to give reservation, to what extent we should not give. So, all these hiccups are present only in developing nations. So, developed nations there is no reservation at all, they need not care of all these things and both merit and reservation should be selectively chosen. And then Robert Jackson says, every administration is embedded with its cultural and value system. So, we have our own value system. Okay. So, we have uh, some value system wherein Cows are treated as sacred. In some other value systems, they are treated as a Q sin. Okay. So, some uh, treat uh, pork as an antagonistic meat, some treat it as a delicious meat. So, when all these uh, topsy turvies are present, so it is we, we have to study the environmental context and then decide our policies. Okay. But in developed nations, the turbulences, the topsy turvies, okay, the overlaps, heterogeneities, so, these are less and they even though they uh, do not study on their environment, but obvious if they follow the idealistic path, so they will survive. So, even if they follow the hierarchy rules, specialization, impartiality, so they will survive, but ours is not the case. Okay. So, we have to make sure that all these things are taken into consideration and then however, for the developed countries, universal principles, grand theory, etcetera. So, they also never worked. So, now we are countering saying that now the knowledge of ecology is must for the study of science of administration everywhere. So, knowledge of administration, knowledge of environment is essential everywhere. So, we cannot say that West is the best. Okay. So, now we are answering here this in three parts. So, first we are saying that yes, it is more important for the developing nations and in the developed nations, they can go for idealistic path. But however, even in the developed administration, so some of the things never worked because the word developed is itself subjective. Okay. So, that ecological environmental study, so that has to be there. So, that has to be universally applicable not only for the developing or the developed. Okay. So, on those lines, you can conclude give the best. Okay, then coming to next. Gender equality and women's rights have laid down a strong foundation of development. Elaborate. So, here uh, a simple question and how you bring in the uh, administrative perspective of this. 
Okay. So, Joseph Plengler uh, development takes place when an index which is desirable improves in its magnitude. So, a simple definition on development and now. Hence, indices like HDI, human capital index, multi poverty index, etcetera, have equal weightage for development of women. So, all these they give equal importance for women development. We have gender gap index, gender inequality index embedded in all, all these. Okay. And then gender equality has resulted in participation of women in all rungs of administration. So, starting from being a woman president to a woman sarpanch in Gram Panchayat. So, all these have been changed. So, bringing women under administration is the best way where we can feminize administration or where we can empower the woman under public administration. So, whenever you write the gender equality and women's right in administration, so write it in how to bring them into civil services, how to bring them into politics, how to uh, bring them into highest echelons of administration. So, on those perspectives, you should answer, you should not see just say that we should give them health, education, all, the, all those things. So, those are fit for a sociology answer, not for POBAD. And then, Neta M. Galas, so first woman president of AFSPA. So, she said, I am not the woman president of ASPA. So, ASPA is American Science for Political Science and Administration. Okay. So, I am not the woman president of ASPA, I am the president of ASPA. So, treat me as equally as you treated the former presidents. So, that was what she said. And then, consultation of women in policies formulation and implementation. So, we should not only bring them into administration, whenever we are going for any other policies, women should also be consulted. So, we have the gender budget here. So, bring in gender budget, which is equally present in our syllabus itself. Then, mobilization of women in politics. So, we had women party in India. So, in 2018-19, so we had this women party, which was contesting or however it faded away. So, we have to encourage such parties. Then, there is no tool for development more powerful than empowerment of women. So, Kofi Annan. So, but obvious uh, statement is an assertion, simple assertion. So, however you want, you can argue. Okay. So, argue likewise, give the best. Okay. So, in such you can bring in as many quotes as possible. So, never miss an opportunity. Then, performance appraisal needs to be seen beyond the mere suitability of the official for vertical promotion, explain. So, uh, on the same lines, even uh, we had given a question. So, that question stated like performance appraisal should not only be a appraisal of positives. So, it has to be appraisal of negatives as well. It has to be motivating as well. It has to point out the other's experience as well. So, it is a multidimensional. It is not one dimensional. So, here it has to be seen beyond mere suitability of official for vertical promotion. So, performance appraisal mostly looks into suitability that is via key result areas and key performance indicators. So, whether this person is suitable for promotion or not. So, this is how it is going on. But, however, mere suitability can result in trained incapacity, rule worshipping and risk avert officials. Okay. So, if you just see the performance appraisal and then if you promote them, then but obvious you will end up getting only these people who have known how to get a good performance appraisal and they have got a good performance appraisal and they know how to get promoted. Okay. So, our performance appraisal should go beyond their thinking capacity. Okay. So, then hence you should also look into ability so that even talented persons, although with less experience and seniority, can be amenable for promotions. So, if there are some talented people and even if they lack some experience and even if they have incurred some initial failures, so even they should be given some chances. So, our performance appraisal should say that even under uh, the given circumstances, he had performed the best. So, that is why despite being failure, he is amenable for vertical promotions. Okay. So, uh, Narendra Modi might have performed worst in the COVID-19 second wave, but he has performed to the best of his capacity. So, he is amenable for second term. So, likewise, performance appraise, appraisal should take the practical ground reality into consideration okay, and even the talent into consideration. Then, integrity of a person. So, even though, even though he might not have performed well, but he has performed honestly. 
he has done the honest job okay so anyone sitting in that place might have done the same so manmohan singh had allegations of corruptions but he has done his honest duty okay so his honesty should also be underlined underlined in the performance appraisal report and that should also be considered while vertical promotions okay so not the uh, actual or the uh, layman performance appraisal what we have now all this should be included for the vertical promotion and then impression among colleagues subordinates and superiors to ensure he works with better coordination okay so performance appraisal it should look how he coordinates with the colleagues not only his performance but also his opinion rega regarding him with others okay so we can bring in 360 degree appraisal then his leadership and work style okay so his leadership so that an individual is not only suitable for normal functioning but also during contingencies so whether he saves an organization or not so all these so hence performance appraisal should assess the overall attributes of person before his or her promotion so a performance appraisal should not only look into key result areas and his performances okay it should also look into his ability his honesty his talent okay and also his coordinating ability and his ability to save the organization in times of contingency so all these should be inculcated in performance appraisal and all these should be the criteria for vertical promotion so not only your result and performance okay so argue on these lines okay give the best okay then it's widely agreed that government ought to provide the goods that market fails to provide or does not provide efficiently efficiently so but obvious a simple statement not so much of thought process is required so we will go with the public choice approach was born in the backdrop of theory of state failure okay so here later it was found that even market can fail and hence the presence of government was reemphasized so here you can give goldsmith and eggers privatization puts more than less responsibility on the government yes it does because private will not go to every sector private will not invest in every nook and corner so wherever it doesn't government has to there so private fails to enter where there is no profit welfare schemes and subsidies are the government's sole responsibilities they are the government's sole prerogatives okay and then private provides goods only to the paying public and government has to pay to the unpaid public so our pds okay our pre mid day meals for pregnant so all this have to be given by the government then as per kapam npm gives way to economic relation between government and citizen okay so instead of economic relation we should have a social emotional relation we should have a governed and governance or the governing and the governed so such relationship so a caring welfareing a motherly relationship should be inculcated then it fails to provide efficient services to last male and last man so private will not think of every last man who is suffering government has to think of it okay so here we can bring in robert chambers okay so hence government needs to interfere in these areas so that it can fill the voids so in every statement we are saying that private doesn't go to some areas government has to go so the same thing you are saying again and again but in different words that's it okay so answer like this here you can bring in a uh, pds and others and you can bring in government schemes and so that you can embed the paper 2 in paper 1 okay so one more suggestion is that friends not all not all uh, questions they have amenable to bringing paper 2 but whenever there is given a chance you have to bring in so don't just thrust paper 2 for every paper 1 answer so but wherever they are applicable provide some examples okay then come to next mis has evolved and gone far beyond its traditional advantages due to technical advancement comment so how mis has evolved so what obvious a very very direct question so mis when conceptualized for collection collation storage and retrieval of information so that was the very basic and however it has evolved so it has gone to decision support system so what is decision support system we are converting the data into figures flow charts pie charts and others okay 
and then executive information system. So, only those which are required for planning and execution. So, those are being separated and then accounting information and marketing information. So, specifically for market demands and accounts. So, those are used and human resource management system. So, the humans level of acumen, level of motivation, level of morale. So, all these things are all analyzed and office automation. So, file work, field work, okay, movement of circulars, mo momentums. So, all those things are, are taken into. Then school information. So, the result motivation levels, the quality of teachers, all those enterprise resource planning. Okay. So, here how a organization is uh, planning its resource and what are the inventories and how to manage them, what is the next product. So, what resource have to be used, what is the budget and then local database. So, here in the locality. So, what is the population of this locality, how many are minorities, how many are majorities. Okay. So, now it is called overall a decision support system. Okay. So, wherein all these will help in taking the decisions in various sectors. Okay. So, just explain all these things, but obvious you will get the maximum bounty of the examiner. Okay. Then 6a emphasis on control and reducing public expenditure has diverted the focus of government's budget from basic objectives of reallocation of resources, bringing economic stability and promoting social equity. So, the question says these are the basic objectives of the budget, but now it is moving towards the cost control and reducing expenditure. So, everywhere that sasta, so that has been creeped. So, uh, government is unable to spend even a single NP liberally. Okay. So, you can begin with the Robert Smith and Thomas Lynch. So, budget is more than just a financial document. So, it is a political social document, but due to this excess importance for the expenditure control. So, it is more and more becoming a financial document. Okay. So, friends whenever this budget comes in the paper one. So, try to bring in these people. So, these are the ones who have done the maximum research the field of budget. Okay. So, do not straight away go to Indian budgeting system. Then excessive involvement of financial experts has led to budget being considered as the instrument of financial control. Okay. So, whenever the financial experts make the budget. So, they just try the, to control, control the cash. Okay. So, we have seen that in case of Raghuram Rajan etcetera. So, their aim was just to control inflation. So, they were never bothered with the growth, they were never bothered with the welfare. So, or nothing of such sort. Okay. So, do not write all these things, these are bit biased. Okay. These are the arguments of the government, but just under, understand that. So, just state that when the budget is formed by the financial experts. So, they will be having more concern towards the financial prudence. So, not on the welfare. Then several economic experts suggested dire fiscal policy even during COVID-19. So, many said you should not go for fiscal easing, you should not go for accommodative, but they did not say that how to trigger the business. So, business activity was in the lowest. So, what to do then? Then political opposition has also of late started questioning every single bug being spent. So, too much of opposition, one single rupee spent. So, Kejriwal will go and stand in Ram Maidan. Okay. Then due to this, several other objectives get hindered. So, there is a grave necessity of money supply to keep the economy stable during crisis. For example, US government's fiscal stimulus during 20, 2008 crisis. So, if government had not spent here, okay, so economy was not coming to the stability. So, world economy would have been heavier if government did not intervene and spend profligately. Then social schemes like Obamacare got repealed as there was a huge human cry against expenditure. So, Americans and financial experts they only said that Obamacare is spending too much money, spending too much money, but actually it was a progressive scheme. It was helping the health conditions of several people, but that got repealed. Then too much reliance on fiscal prudence has resulted in allocation of funds to welfare measures like Bharat Nirman etc. in India. So, even in India, we have curbed the allocation to several. So, resource allocation, liberal resource allocation and then welfareism. So, all these are being hindered and spending 
profligately even during crisis is hindered when we speak of this cost control. Then there is a need to strike a balance and view the budget holistically. Okay, so, in the last we are going to neutralize our arguments. So, budget should reflect the values and priorities of people and not that of experts. So, Mary Landrieu. So, you can use her quotes. Okay, use as many quotes as possible so that you will impress the examiner. Okay. So, answer likewise then come to next B. In modern context, Rixian terms have not altogether disappeared, but have emerged in different forms with newer meanings. Okay. So, here bring all the words of Rix and say that what are their new meanings. Okay. So, in the introduction, Rix wrote a dictionary of words in his works on organization. Okay. So, most of them are not just relevant, but have also taken different meanings as societies evolved. So, example agraria. So, here a version of Americans to Indian employees shows a new kind of ascription has been grown unlike the caste, creed, religion, race of Rixian times. Okay. So, here that economics or here that racism or here external versus indigenous. So, all these have taken into consideration. Okay. So, here that ascriptive is taken for Americans mindset that is why they should come here and work. Okay. Achievement is yes, they are ready to work even with lesser amount of money. Okay. So, earlier the same was prevalent like the Brahminism only should preach, preach in the temples, Shudra should not preach. So, the same is going on between Indians and Americans in software companies of US. Okay. So, the meaning is same ascriptive versus attained okay, uh, sorry ascriptive versus achieved and here the persons are different and then trans Asia okay, the whole globe is now one society and we are moving towards moving just in trans Asia. Okay. So, there is nothing like na, agraria industrial societies. So, we cannot say Europe is industria or India is agraria, we cannot say North Korea is agraria, we cannot say Japan is a uh, industria. So, all world is trans Asia. So, all are in the process of development, we are just moving towards that is it, we have never reached that industria. Okay. And then industria are not those which have attained administration setup. So, industria are not those which have huge defense, which have uh, luxury lives, etcetera, but those which are yielding development and social change. So, Bhutan is actual industria. Okay. So, America is not industria, Korea is not industria, Bhutan which provides happiness for the people is the actual industria now then heterogeneity. So, diversity and practicality demands application of diverse rules to diverse people. Okay. So, again here universal application of law is not applicable right now. So, we have to apply diverse rules for diverse people. So, we cannot apply the same rules for a farmer and an IAS officer. Okay. So, we cannot apply a, for a same rule for a poor man and a rich man. So, we have to make sure that some reservations are given to them, we have to make sure that some efforts are made to bring them. So, we have to make sure that some refugees are given place inside our nation. Okay, then formalism, the environmental compensation from the developed nations is formally present, but actually absent. So, whatever they have promised the green climate fund, okay, whatever they have promised in the special climate change fund. So, these are just formally present, actually they are not present. So, therein the developed nations are feigning formalism and then overlapping. So, instead of overlaps between two departments, so Rick's conceptualized overlaps between two departments, we have overlap between the governments. So, we have international, national, local. So, all have been overlapped. So, one small crime in Delhi. So, international, national, municipalities all will come, but one crime in Chhattisgarh, Garchiroli. So, no one comes. So, Overlap is huge in Delhi, there is vacuum in Chhattisgarh. Okay, then, hence, has said change is the only permanent, hence, administration needs to change as per the situation and circumstances. So, you can give your own meaning, okay, you can say that these words they have got their own meanings right now, okay. So, they have their own manifestations and they are still relevant, okay. So, that would be your lines of argument, okay, then come to next. 
A striking feature of economic development is an apartment, apparent symbiotic evolution of strong states and strong market economies. Okay, analyze. Okay, a striking feature of economic development is a symbiotic evolution of the strong state and also the strong market. So, what obvious again a easy question. So, strong state or an economic development occurs when both state and market are strong. Gone are the days of state versus market debate in the era of governance immaterial of who gives whether public or private. So, whether citizens are getting or not is the foremost. Okay. So, economic development is happening when people start getting money, people have increased life opportunities, increased quality of life okay. and who is giving whether the state is giving, market is giving is immaterial and hence this is high time that theory of state failure, theory of market failure etcetera are shunned. Okay. So, both should work hand in hand for economic development. Okay. So, state come with public mandate. So, they have the legal backup and huge resource in their custody and private has latest managerial skills, technological backup. So, both should work hand in hand. So, both should work in tandem that is a healthy market created by powerful state can attract huge private money and investment. Yes. So, if you have a proper healthy market that is created by the strongest state, but obvious more and more people they recognize the ease of doing business there, they recognize the impartial rules, regulations there. So, more and more investments come. So, Competition Commission of India, SEBI are doing meticulous jobs in these areas. And then public private partnership not only create capital assets, but also create employment opportunities thereby enhancing economic productivity. So, a proper public private partnership happens only when both are equally stronger. So, if government is strong, it results in dominance. If government is weak, it results in dependence. So, both should be strong enough. Then collaboration like special purpose vehicles can also help government in saving cost of implementation. So, the special purpose vehicle in smart cities, special purpose vehicle in our Delhi Kochi metros. So, all have yielded a great economic development, a great infrastructural boost and that has helped the nation a lot. And then good governance is nothing but a network governance that is involvement of the various stakeholders that is the market and the state for development of a nation. So, for a development both should go hand in hand. Okay. So, here we confronted the disputes between market and the state and then we said with examples how market and the state should go hand in hand. Okay. So, this is how you can analyze give the best. Then policy problems are increasingly trending towards being wicked. Okay. So, discuss the capacity and preparedness of the state to tackle such problems. So, here policy problems are increasingly trending towards being wicked. So, public policies themselves are becoming cruel and crooked. So, how the state should tackle these problems. Okay, so, we begin since the origin of public policies are uh, since the origin of the public policies. Okay, so, they are being accused of being elitist, unpredictable and majoritarian. So, they are being cruel because they are elitist, they are formed only by elitist few and then they are unpredictable and then they are majoritarian in nature. Then it was called as the garbage can model by the George Kingdon. Okay, so, the garbage can means so, it is not caring towards anyone. Okay. It is a garbage. So, it is a, it is a hell. Okay. So, it is never a heaven for anyone. Then continuing with this problems involved in the course of policy formulation, implementation and evaluate, uh, evaluation have taken the wicked turns. Okay. So, how we forcibly in, uh, implement a negative policy, how government try to forcibly implement the farm laws. So, all those. So, they have become wicked. Okay. So, they have taken the wicked turns. We have seen the uh, violence of Republic Day in the last year and then remote sensing and armchair policies are being regarded as anti-public. Okay. So, here the best example is the farm bill or might be the Lakshadweep policy. So, the Lakshadweep uh, administration policy which stated that the cow slaughter should be banned and all those. So, how there was huge cry and how people said that it was uh, crooked and it was wicked as well. Then 
delays in implementation and other technical problems have also turned out to be wicked towards public. Okay. So, here the fails in the biometric authentication in Bihar and Jharkhand has led to the death of several beneficiaries. So, just because biometrics have not uh, matched, so they were denied food crops for months together and they died. Okay. So, such public policies, if they are not wicked, then what they are? Then, when is society is not uplifting the minorities with its policies, it is most probably used to suppress them. So, Raza Farazmand, so his quote I am using here. So, the public policy should cater to the weakest. So, it should cater to everyone in the first place and it should also cater to the weakest. So, only then, so that will become a good policy and it will never become a wicked policy if it caters to the last man. And then, the capacity and preparedness of the state. So, next comes. So, here many specialists and domain experts are inducted into administration, so that policies are formulated after detailed study and analysis. Okay. So, the study and analysis and specialists, so rather than making policies by generalists, so all these are being inculcated. Then, proper usage of MIS and DSS is being taken up, so that proper estimates of expenditure and beneficiaries are made. So, there is no, nothing that huge fund is spent on a meager policy or meager fund is spent on a huge policy. So, proper adjustment of funds has to take a, be taken place. And then technological aids like e-delivery of services. So, we are not uh, formulating wicked policies where we neglect the remote people. So, we are using technology so that we will deliver to every last mile and to every last man. Then citizen centric administration. So, that demands frequent feedback, so that we ask the people whether the policy is good or bad and then we fine tune the policies. So, all these are the state's abilities to tackle and it has come up with its own capacity and preparedness and it has showed like some policies have been abolished, some policies have been fine tuned, some policies have been removed okay, and some policies have been encouraged and uplifted. Okay. So, likewise then. Frank Marini's quote in the end, the purpose of public administration is to reduce suffering and increase the life opportunities both inside and outside organization. So, everywhere our policy should not be wicked, it should be progressive, it should be helping, it should not be hurting at any cost. Okay. So, these are some of my ideas, you can give your own answer, give the best. Then, zero best budgeting was intended to get away from the incrementalism, but has ended up being the most incremental of any budgetary approach discuss. So, we will introduce with the uh, founder of zero budget that is Peter Fair in 1970s. So, he introduced zero based budgeting okay. and then starting from scratch, this is the very essence of zero budget and that intended that there is no hangover of previous budget while formulating new ones means completely afresh. So, if you are going for MG Narega this year, there need not be MG Narega next year. So, that is how zero bed budgeting called for a completely rational radical budgeting. Okay, and then like in the first five year plans, we went for agriculture, second five year plan it is entirely different. So, it was manufacturing industries. So, this is how zero budgeting expected the things to be. Then zero based budgeting also demanded some extra rationalism put in the words of Ezekiel Rohr. So, Ezekiel Rohr said that extra rationalism should be put in like if you are going up with the budget of this year, then remove all those things. So, think rationally. So, what is needed? So, what was needed in the first wave is different. What was needed in the second wave is entirely different. So, to think that entirely different schemes, you require that extra rationality. So, it was zero budget was not only radical and rational, it demanded extra rationalism as well. So, think to think out of the box. So, what is needed? Okay. So, what might be future problems? So, likewise, then that is in case of any technological advancement, we should shun all previous expenditures. So, technological advancements, social advancements, so all those things and here I have given technological advancements, you can argue likewise. Then like how zero budgeting helped cell phone companies to shift from keypad to touch screen. 
so when you are when the market is moving away from keypad to touch screen so you have to spend 80% of the budget towards our touch screen you should not say that uh, we have to be in the keypad itself okay so that is not zero budgeting so radicalism so completely allocating 80% or 90% of the funds to that one is radicalism then but when the budget is started from scratch every fundamentals get questioned okay so in the zero based budgeting it is that every single rupee has to be questioned so why you are giving this who is the beneficiary so what policy did you bring in so all these things so, okay so that was leading to excessive dilatory okay so why uh, you didn't allocate for uh, keypad why so much for touch screen will you uh, know it will work so when all these are questioned so your policies they get dilatory okay so why uh, going for such uh, debates and discussions etc so officers will think back like, uh, go and allocate some uh, 40 percent for keypad let the organization die so therein trends incrementalism so unable to tolerate all those questions the zero budget is winning incrementalism then eva its journey so change if not substantial only leads to tinkering so if you are not going for extra rationalism so then nothing but it is incrementalism only then lately zero budget is also conceived as zero waste budget okay so zero wastage hence have very tight fiscal stipulations are levied so this has resulted in putting novel projects on the back burner as they require significant expenditure so whenever the zero waste budget is being taken up then but obvious so you cannot come up with interlinking of rivers demonetization and such the like projects because they involve significant expenditure and also the risks and then zero budgeting never gives scope to radical investments in demonetization like initiatives that come with significant financial risks yes so when there is financial risk when there, there is depicting so no one will allow that then hence there is a need to reduce excessive oversight and fiscal tightening in zero budgeting so if that is not there then but obvious zero budgeting can happen with utmost rationality else whatever zero budgeting we are doing it will bog down to incrementalism only okay so this is how you can argue again a simple question if you know the zero budgeting very well give the best then ict has immense potential to transform governance and empower citizens examine so again a very very basic statement you can give a uh, whatever uh, you know regarding the information communication technology so e governance is instrumental good governance is substantial so pk mohanty's quote so pk mohanty was the former uh, director of indian institute of public administration okay then ict comes with effective collection and maintenance of database so data is the new fuel data is the new oil now yes so mis and dss okay so this are required so that policies are analyzed in detail before analysis then it helps in last mile and last man connectivity yes so if you have a proper database who is present in which area so that results in the last mile connectivity that is robot chambers so here you can give example of the direct benefit transfers wherein whoever it might be wherever he might be so we are giving directly to his bank account and then ict helps in better financial management so best example is pfms so under public financial management system ict helps in tracking and tracing of the money in every single stage so in that stage we have the technology which is keeping the flow of money accountable then it also helps in transparency and accountability thereby curbing corruption leakages and pilferages example digital media and social media vigilance yes so when you have these social media and digital media then nothing can go unaccountable nothing can go without transparency then in future also ict is going to help with blockchain technology so in the budget recent budget government came up with india's cryptocurrency so by that blockchain technology will come to handy and then our technologies other technologies like artificial intelligence then other internet of things other and others can be used for fulfilling the needs and aspirations of the people okay and also in 
implementing various welfare schemes. Hence, ICT is going to revolutionize both development administration and administrative development. Okay. So, when it is doing both of them, but obvious it will transform the governance and it will empower the citizens. Okay. So, give some paragraphs on how it will empower the citizens. So, if you have a transparent accountable governance, but obvious it is a citizens empowerment. Okay. So, argue like this a simple question. So, whenever such questions are there, so choose such questions and answer instead of uh, getting stuck with any hardcore thinker related ones. So, better choose this ones. Then, eighth one, the successful attainment of sustainable development goals objectives largely depends upon the wisdom, experience and far-sightedness of the actions involved and their willingness to cooperate with the implementation process. So, nothing the question is simply lengthy, it only says that SEG requires, okay. So, the wisdom and uh, expertise and also cooperation, okay. So, uh, here we are just saying like sustainable development goals for coordination and cooperation of all stakeholders in pursuit of those targets, okay. So, how the political leadership, how they should collaborate, they should have the expertise to assess the situation of poverty, hunger, illiteracy, etcetera. They also have that priorities, these, they have to prioritize these over other political agendas, okay. So, this is prioritize. So, they have to make sure that health education comes first, not your anti-conversion bills, not your Romeo squad comes first. So, first health education should come. Then bureaucracy should be specialist enough to suggest a prudent and feasible policies. Okay. So, they have to be practical, prudent, affordable and accessible and design the plan of action and also generalist enough to faithfully implement the order of political leaders. So, bureaucrats should be specialists as well as generalists. Okay. And then market, market should take part actively with creation of affordable choices. Okay. So, it should compete with a government aggressively. Okay. So, in auctions, so that cost of implementation is reduced and the com and the project are completed on time without compromising the quality. Okay. So, this is the responsibility of the market in achieving, achieving sustainable developmental goals. So, if cheaper projects are being implemented with time and that too with quality, but obvious, so that will lead to a safe city, that will lead to a clean city, that will lead to a habitable city. Okay. So, here examples like transparent bidding of coal in India, then Delhi Metro, so which is implemented via the special purpose vehicle. So, all these are examples how the market can contribute for sustainable developmental goals. Then international stakeholders, so they should help in transferring necessary technologies, funds, expertise and experience and exposure. For example, UNDP, UNEP, World Bank, so how they have contributed some amount of money for implementation of government schemes, how UNDP contributes for saving of several wildlife. So, our project tiger, project elephant, so all of them have been funded by UNDP and UNEP, how it caters to our air pollution, water pollution and others and World Bank. So, several uh, projects, uh, several welfare schemes have been uh, receiving donation from World Bank consistently. Then non-state actors, so non-state actors, NGO, civil society organizations, so they should take part actively in policy formulation, implementation and evaluation. So, example Lokpal, Akshay Patra and others. So, Lokpal in policy formulation, Akshay Patra in policy implementation, Pratham in policy evaluation. So, likewise various stakeholders they should contribute. So, that is the essence and we have explained with examples what all they should do. So, here the various stakeholders and then the key words you are generalist, specialist, then expertise okay, and uh, others uh, uh, good examples. So, all these are the ones which change your answer from a GS answer to a POBAD answer. So, the language of keywords, so that is the key in POBAD. If you do not write in the language of keywords, if you just write a generalistic language, you do not get good marks. Okay. So, easy question, give the best. Then, groups work to elevate issues on the policy agenda or seek to deny other groups the opportunity to place issues. In this background, discuss the role of interest groups in agenda setting in developing countries. So, again an easy question, 
So, here you can go with the group theory, okay, lobbying, pressure groups and others. So, Gordon Tullock's book, The Welfare State of Tariff, Monopolies and Thefts. So, there is always monopolies for tariffs okay, and there are thefts. So, all these are because of these pressure groups and interest groups. So, they lobby the government, they confuse the government, so they loot the government or sometimes they tilt the government in their favor. So, many things happen. Then, the Tullock's paradox. So, rent seekers can bribe politicians at a cost much lower than the value of the favor they get. Okay. So, by giving some 1000 rupees, so they will get favor of say 10 lakh. Okay. So, that is where lobbying happens, that is where interest groups arise. Okay. So, uh, lobbying comes first, but however, some lobbying are legal, that is suggestions, persuasions, petitions. So, all these can be taken up, but illegals like protest, gratifications, enticements should not be taken up. And then, here you can bring in George Stigler's capture theory. Okay. So, how these interest groups, so they will capture key decision makers. So, here you can give examples on how various telecom companies were against Reliance Geo. Okay. So, they lobbied against Reliance Geo's predatory pricing and how Reliance Geo with its intimacy to Narendra Modi. So, they got away from that. Okay. So, this is how the, the denial, okay. so policy agendas, so turns and tilts, so all these they happen every time. Okay. And the group theory of policy making, so the seesaw, so it is like a seesaw like this. So, whichever is variable government tilts towards that end. Okay. So, more is the tilt of administration to any group, more the chances of decision going in their favor. Okay. So, wherever your interest groups are there, wherever these groups are clashing, so all those examples you can come and give here. Then, examples like PC, Asokam, etc. against India entering RCEP. So, they were succeeding, they succeeded in stopping India from entering to RCEP because of their pressure and because of their uh, lobbying. Then NASCOM against aggregate gross revenue judgment of Supreme Court. So, here Supreme Court had levied some aggregate gross revenue on telecom companies, but NASCOM they lobbied with the government and government gave some compensation and concessions to them. Then farmers protest and the Republic Day violence. So, all these, so all these they elevate issues on the policy agenda. Okay. So, if there is any policy, they come and they will capture the government and they will turn the government into pieces, they will tear them and they seek to deny other groups the opportunity to place issues. So, at any cost other groups shall not come here. So, we will capture. So, that capture theory, rent seeking theory, all those things you can explain beautifully in this answer. And then hence, interest groups are double edged swords which need a proper regulation. So, when they are approaching the government, when they are capturing, but they should not use illegal means to stop others, uh, to stop the opportunities of others to place their needs. So, both of them should place their needs, but government should be the umpire. So, government should be the neo Marxist state. So, it should decide on its uh, wisdom, it should not uh, be carried away, it should not be overwhelmingly deciding on any one group. Okay. So, government's weight should be intact, it should not be tilted easily and moreover, no pressure group should use illegal means to stop others from entering. Okay. So, such arguments you give here and give the best. Okay. So, again an easy question and then civil servants generally tend to exhibit the values and ethical framework of political executives, executives under whom they function explain, but obvious most of the civil servants. So, they automatically become the followers of their political bosses. So, either because of the the nexus or because of quid pro quo or even because of fan following. So, we can say the positive note of that. Okay. Here, full turn civil servants should serve the government of any complexion. So, this is harming neutrality. So, that is why we started this with the neutrality itself. And then, however, there are tendencies that bureaucracy unknowingly becomes aligned to its masters. So, unknowingly some become. Okay. So, many people they were fans of Jawaharlal Nehru. So, many foreign service officers, they did not have the knowledge as much as Nehru had in international relations. Okay. Then, however, 
Woodrow Wilson, politics cannot be separated from administration. Those principles of politics are its basic foundations. So, if the government itself is socialistic, so bureaucracy cannot be capitalist. So, they have to follow them faithfully. Okay, then Richard Bendix, during application of rules, decisions often become contaminated with addition of political interest. Okay, so political interest, personal interest are always there, but that should not be applied. Okay. So, we have to make sure that bureaucracy lies impartial, it should follow its own value system which is given under its vision and mission statement, it should not be carried away by the political principles, they should be as neutral as possible. Then some political leaders have aura of their persona which tilts bureaucracy, yes, so that charismatic leadership, so that also impacts. So, this has both positive impact as well as negative impact, so positive impact so, less ego and personality clashes. So, there will be a good rapport between the minister and the bureaucrat and speedy administration happens. There is no questioning, there is no returning of file, etc. Then good rapport comes with minimum transfers and instability. So, if there is rapport, so for years together, bureaucrats will stay in the place. So, P. N. Huxer stayed as a PMO for more than 5 to 6 years and then Raghuram Rajan, Urjit Patel, they quit as RBI governors because there was some clashes, there was no rapo. And then negative impacts, so committed bureaucracy, so their gross and excess. So, bureaucracy, if they are allowed to walk, they will be ready to crawl. And then nepotism, scams, corruption, etc., will increase. And lastly, the neutrality of civil service goes for a toss. So, here you can give a number of examples, the calls scam secretary who has been questioned right now. So, there are a number of examples from paper 2 we can bring in. Okay. And then in the conclusion O'Malley, civil servants are answerable and responsible to law and law alone, not to any political leaders. That is why they have to maintain neutrality at any cost. Okay. So, this was the paper's discussion. Okay. So, overall we summarize the discussion here. See friends, as I said in the very beginning of the class, so several thinkers have written their own books. Okay, so, what your perspective is there? So, better bring those perspectives and communicate them properly to the examiner, only that is more than sufficient. First one you require is clarity of your thoughts. Okay, so if you have a good clarity of your thoughts, then but obvious your half work is done. Okay. So, just three ideas you give, but let them be clear. So, in the garb of giving as much as possible, okay, do not mess up the things. Second one, do not worry too much about quantity. Okay. So, for 20 mark, 15 mark questions, there will not be much to write, but do not worry, even six paragraphs more than sufficient. Okay. So, make sure that whatever you write, they are very much relevant. So, do not worry too much about the quantity, worry about the clarity of your thought process. So, let all your thought process be within the framework, okay. So, within the framework of the question and lastly as the form of value addition, make sure that you bring good amount of quotes, okay. So, this was the overall summary, okay. And lastly, remember uh, Mahatma Gandhi ji who had struggled day and night for the nation and he was the man who taught the humanity for Indians. So, Indians themselves are known for humanity, but he was the man who retaught that to Indians. So, we follow in his path, we cherish his noble ideals and we uh, get into civil service and make India great again. So, do it all the very best from my side, good luck friends.